Bokina Dieno, a whole dean in Timo, Omuba, Umpa Bokina, then a Santi Dens, a whole year dean in Timo, Omuba, who are all talk with Dinny Jays. Because the Bokina tomato is tough and lasts longer, the consumer prefer it to the local ones. I like selling the Bokina tomato because the demand is high. So we sell at a high price and make enough money. But with the local ones, because it is watery, we sell at a lower price so that it doesn't rot in our stock. The chemical in it is very little than the Burkina one. Even though the Burkina one has a lot of advantage, where they import it from to south here, it can take a longer time before it got rotten. But the Ghana one is not stronger that much. Burkina and Tosi, and the I often buy in large quantity and refrigerated, so I prefer the ones that can last long. That is why I want the Burkina tomato. Even if you don't refrigerate it, it can last for more than three days. Ours is watery, unless you want to use it immediately. It gets rotten after a day or two, so I don't buy in large quantity. In this documentary, I travel with my colleague Nana Asensu Mensa to some tomato producing areas in Ghana and Burkina Faso to investigate challenges from the farm gate to the market centre. The planting season is here and tomato farmers across the country will have to plant the season crop in anticipation of good harvest. It's just another day on the farm of Clement Kansaki. He's lived all his life in Navrongo. For more than 30 years, Clement cultivated tomatoes on a large scale. I started farming in 1981. Uh, the time that uh, finished this project, we started farming granules about two years time. When we produce tomatoes, getting to some time, the tomatoes, they are not buying. Because you can produce the tomatoes. In fact, this land is about 1,500 hectares. The, the, the other part we use for tomato. By getting to some time, we can produce tomatoes and it will rot. You can't get uh, those who are coming to buy because uh, they say the tomato is soft. But today, Clement has switched to rice. There's no ready market these days. For tomatoes, you can harvest so many times, but for rice, you can only harvest once. If something can be done about it so that we can come back to tomato production, we'll be very happy. At a point, we created a barrier at the Paga border that won't allow the women to import from Burkina Faso. But after a while, they went back. They claim our tomato is soft and has a short shelf life. Ghanaian scientists should find out what is wrong with our land? Clement is hoping rice will provide a better livelihood. Our team moved to Akumadan. Akumadan is synonymous with tomato cultivation. It is one of the crop's major growing areas in the country. 50-year-old Sarah Nana Ekuyabwache is transplanting more than 500 tomato seedlings for today. She is assisted by a farm hand who waters the plant behind her. Nanekia, as she is affectionately called, expects a good harvest from a 20-acre farm. <laughs> We produce a lot of tomatoes here. There is no ready market. Most of our produce go waste, but we can't stop growing them. We are hopeful that someday there will be a ready market. The traders claim our tomato is watery and soft. They also say our tomato has shorter shelf life. That is why they don't buy anymore. 
It's a car best that just a crab. Do you cram? If you cram, a big bit. So must say, yeah, no, yeah, no. I am married. We do a crown and I am married. She's not alone. There are others working in the scorching sun, either nursing or transplanting on this 1,500 acre piece of land. Farmers at Akumada rely mainly on the irrigation facility constructed by government over 30 years ago to water their crops. Their challenge, however, is high cost of electricity. <laughs> Our main challenge here at Akumadan is the high cost of electricity. We have had to use 1,000 cities for every acre of land we farm for constant supply of water from the irrigation dam every month. Within the calendar year, different regions of the country produce tomato at different times of the year. From late December through April, May, Ghana's Upper East region and Burkina Faso supply almost all the fresh tomato in the country. From June onwards, the harvest picks up in the rained areas, with a longer season in Bono Ahafu and Ashanti regions and shorter seasons in Greater Accra. Irrigated tomato from Greater Accra and Akumadang in the Puno Ahafo dominates the market later in the year. Cultivation of tomato in Ghana has gone through a lot of phases. In the 1990s up to the turn of the 21st century farmers, both Dema and Akumadang used to cultivate tomato all year round for local consumption. Besmak Nyako is chief farmer in Akumadang. We used to grow all year round. We were growing so many varieties as well. I even became the national best tomato farmer in 2003. National best tomato farmer. The story was pleasant until tomato traders stopped taking supplies from local farmers at places like Dema, Akumadang, and Agogo. Besmak Nyako cannot put a finger on the reason. Afe Oma, you won't say a baby baby no, you're beautiful penna, you're twitting no, general, let me just take. It got to a time the traders were not coming anymore. We don't know the reason. Because we don't want to continue losing, we have stopped planting in the lean season, though we have irrigation facilities here. The the Puno Ahafo region town of Dema in the Tanon of district is another major tomato growing hub in the country. Eduse Mensa is chairman of Tomato Growers Association at Dema. He has a clue. Farmers in the area relied mostly on natural rainfall for cultivation. Mr. Mensa says 
A cycle began after changes in rainfall patterns took a toll on dry season tomato farming. A baby HM, not tomato, no, a three seasons. Near a major season, minor season, near a dry season, I come. And here, do baby not a dry season, you know, not a so at the crack. A far and sooner near the year in Adnadino, not it here, and today it means produce no more to say the Ashasapa and the produce no. We were planting in the major, minor and dry season. It got to a time the weather changed. We hardly had enough water to plant for the dry season. Production declined. The traders then resorted to Burkina Faso to augment our low production. So the Burkina Bay farmers expanded their farms and kept supplying our people. We had to stop the production because our products were going waste. If we could get improved varieties that can be similar or better than the variety produced from Burkina Faso, I think it will help. Now is a was a ye jemu. Sabre no so ye station officers ye ni no muaha. And eh ye penny in four no mudda da equiafuano. Omu ni nato ni a boma mani. Ba em se ne hu ju medi ni na e dima omu kakra. Inti ema atwako swa bepim e. A research on the topic, a case of tomato in Ghana productivity by International Food Policy Research Institute was conducted in 2010. It revealed that up to 2002, the market for tomato was good and farmers received what they considered to be a good price. In 2003, yellow leaf kale devastated the crop, resulting in big losses for the farmers. In the following year, when farmers were reluctant to grow tomatoes, the market queens traveled to Burkina Faso to source tomatoes as they could not get sufficient quantities from the Upper East region. Traders suddenly switch attention to Burkina Faso to buy tomatoes. It emerged from casual comparison, Ghana's tomato was of low quality, so they stuck to produce from the Sahel country. Local farmers, however, found the suggestion Ghana's tomato was of low quality far-fetched. Here is Bernard Maudro, manager for Akumadan Irrigation Scheme. The kind of tomato we produce here have evolved over time. It's true, some time ago, the water quality was high and it's, it is just not suitable for processing, for instance. But now we've evolved, we've changed the kind of varieties we produce. And then we produce varieties that are up to standard and even of more quality than the Ogadugu tomato they ration for. District Extension and Crops Officer for Tano North in the Bnohaf region, Karim Mohammed cites the variety of the local crop as a challenge. He says researchers are yet to discover varieties to meet local specification. Research extension linkage, as I've said, it is the researchers. We sell our problem, farmers' problem, then they go into the lab, build upon it, and bring the results. And then, uh, but from the look of things, for the past years, what we are seeing is that. Uh, things are not, you know, they are not feeding the farmers with the correct uh, varieties. Uh, but currently, uh, we are we are working on it. And just last two weeks, we met at the regional level. So we are hoping that uh, if the researchers also improve their research uh, activities and get a very improved variety for the farmers in their community and uh, in Ghana as large, I think uh, we will be not fall on the reef uh, uh, fed uh, to uh, farming we are doing here. Derma community alone can produce approximately 5,000 tons of tomato in the major season. The bulk of it, however, goes waste because traders rather choose to travel to Burkina Faso to buy. Community leaders at a point initiated a tomato factory project but it has since been abandoned for lack of local and central government support. About 30 years ago, 
leadership of the Denmark community realize that so much tomatoes being produced here were going waste, especially in the bumper season. So they decided to put up this structure here to serve as a factory to take care of the overflow of tomatoes being produced during this period. But 30 years now, this has been abandoned. The structure sits on close to six acre land with a lot of facilities already present to help with this factory. But it has been abandoned. Nana Ogusu Asare II is chief of Dema. No. There is a stream here called Insude. We want government to develop it as an irrigation facility for our lean season tomato production. We have land and even started a factory for tomato processing. Government promised to help us buy machines for the factory, but they haven't done it. Now the building has been abandoned. Due to virtual boycott by local traders, farmers in both Dema and Akumadang have stopped dry season cultivation. They do say this is the way and want to see some more. You need to make it to be a year. Enna, a domino so a year, you man, say, I dare say, dry season, you won't work a dia. Season be a rough leno, yet men produce you could and me produce 5,600 tons. Roughly, no cry yet to say, not to say, I can't manage me a befano, you say, with a monk. Yes, say, I dare say, say, Sabri, you work in a candia, and yet me a dry season, you can't want. If you think one man on quatri, because them man won't pono. Naka in me and no more so one me and me a war or my umu or my yam or we be. So I believe a new mushia, you can't want some more intimate in them. In Dema, every household used to produce tomato. So during this lean season, there is nothing we do here. Every season, at least we produce 5,600 tons for supply every season. Though several tons of tomatoes are left to rot on the farm. <laughs> Emma Nay, nya, nya, ye bet me a dian hesia, a bab boye, ama, na quonon in it, womodiano, as a bain, na and chew warm a gen on cohonum view. But irrigation facilities na any honinti. Ama, the Ebeka for whom be an woman swing yam what it will be, and farm wire. In the Upper East region, almost thousand five hundred acres of land was used to cultivate tomatoes under the Tono Irrigation Project in the 1990s and early 2000s. From late December through April, May, Ghana's Upper East Region and Burkina Faso supplied almost all the fresh tomato in the country. But farmers here have stopped producing tomatoes for close to 15 years now because traders complain the local tomato has a short shelf life. I will plead with our government if government can intervene because now some time ago we used to go to South looking for a job we are not getting. If this uh, this government is trying to do uh, the same plan for food and jobs, if they can use that opportunity for us here so that you know we have Ghana, we have scientists, 
they can take care of this land and see what is effects for the land so that we can come back to the tomatoes growing where we we'll grow the tomatoes and grow the, 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 the rice from late december through april or may ghana's upper east region and burkina faso supplied almost all the fresh tomato in the country according to irrigation company of the upper regions equa the tunnel and via irrigation projects together supported 6,000 farmers. Production has declined from almost 12,000 tons per hectare in the year 2000 to less than 200 tons per hectare after 2009. Statistics show that Ghana spends almost 100,000 US dollars to import tomato paste annually. Northern Star Tomato Processing Factory, formerly the Pualugu Tomato Factory, is one of the legacies of Ghana's first president, Dr. Kwame Nkrumah. It was established to process local tomato for the Ghanaian market. Like many state enterprises, it collapsed after the overthrow of Nkrumah. Former President Kufo's government, however, revived it. But it still could not survive for various reasons, mismanagement and especially lack of raw materials that is fresh tomatoes. Farmers here used to supply the bulk of fresh tomatoes for processing. I'm inside the Pualugu tomato factory. Now this factory a few years ago was producing so much canned tomatoes for the country. It was helping the tomato industry in this country. Now, when Ghana is unable to consume most of the tomatoes produced from Akumada and Dema and other places, this magnificent structure with a lot of sophisticated machines will can these tomatoes into tomato paste. But this factory seemed to be rotten away, taken over by dust and wheat. Vincent Atenga used to be the technical assistant at the factory. He is now the caretaker at the dormant plant. Actually, 2007-2008, this factory was working. But the last production this factory made was 2012. Since from 2012, we never did any. If there is tomatoes today, today, and then they say we should produce well, I'm a worker. I'm looking for salary. I'll work. So it is now depends on the management of this factory and then the board chairman. You could tell us when this um, factory was in operation, how, how, how much or how many tomato paste were you producing? What was the capacity here and the, how was it going? The capacity of this factory is 5,000 metric tons per day. Per day? Yes, 500,000 metric tons 500,000 or 5,000? 5, 500,000 metric tons per day. So you were producing tomato paste? Yes. 5,000 pieces of it? Yes, that is the fresh tomatoes. Mm -hmm. And what, what were you getting the supplies for? We get the supply from Upper East here, you know, uh, Paluku, Navrungu, and even along the White Volta. Farmers are seriously farming tomatoes. Even it got to a, uh, a point that uh, Tomato Trailers Association from Accra even came here. Sometimes they were supporting this factory because there was a lot of tomatoes in Burkina Faso. So they would buy it and also bring here and bring it here so that the factory would also receive and return their money to them. So business was booming and then work, uh, Along this uh, Palugu community or the whole of Upper East community, it was employment to with the youth. But now the factory have been collapsed since 2012. We have never worked. Actually, I started working here since 2007. And because I know the machines and everything in this factory, that's why I'm still here. Mm. But the rest of my colleagues left to Accra. But few of us are here with the security men. Okay, so, so you, are, you are trying to protect the place. So are you paid for the work you're doing? Ah, we don't pay. It. They are there, then they will just give you. You are my, I, I, I mean, as I'm just standing, if somebody asks me that they are paying me, I always like to weep. 
Because how much are they giving me? 140 Ghana CDs. And I won't even get it. I won't even get it. I've told them. How do I live? I pay life bill. I pay my, my school uh, fees to my children. And me, myself, in a day, how much am I supposed to eat? Even if you're eating five CDs in a day, how will you feel it? So it's very painful. Now they say one DC, one factory, and this tells it this way. So I believe if, if they are going to build a factory, they should supposed to use this one as the one DC, one factory. So that one, it motivates me. Then I have hope that one day, one day, this factory will work up. Between 50 and 70 trucks full of tomatoes are imported into Ghana during the lean season. Investigations by the team revealed during this period alone, Burkina Faso's economy receives about 54 billion CFA. That is 101,520,000 US dollars every year. The journey Ghanaian traders embark on from Ghana to Burkina Faso in the quest to import fresh tomatoes come with many challenges. It all begins at the Paga border. We are in one of the tracks that plies the Burkina Ghana route. This track is coming from Kukuti in Burkina Faso. And for every track, there are more than 20 people who are in it. It includes the women who are going to sort the tomatoes to make sure they get the right and quality tomato for Ghana. The loading boys who help carry the boxes into these tracks the translators who help with the negotiation because of the language barrier and the mate and then the driver of this particular track. And all these people come together and spend three days in the bushes to get tomato for the people of Ghana. Amidst this, they go through a lot of challenges that need to be tackled. We head to one of the nearest farm gates called Buzanga in Kungusi province, almost four hours drive from Dakoya. Large acres of land have been cultivated in the dry season. The crops are still green and flourishing because water is available. Farmers here do not rely on the rains from the heavens. There are more than 70 irrigation dams spread across growing areas in Burkina Faso. Now this is Burkina Faso and we are in front of one of the dams that is helping the farmers here to produce so much tomatoes uh, for Ghana and the rest of West Africa. Uh, what is happening here is that this dam is pumping water to almost 200 farms around and all the farmers also have small pumping machines so it goes to the bigger one to the smaller one then to all their farms now it is in the dry season and there's a period where you expect that no farmer can be able to produce but they are producing in large quantity and this is such beautiful tomatoes being produced here in Burkina Faso lack of such facilities in Ghana is one of the reasons traders and farmers assigned for the Ghana problem. Bernard Maudro works with the Ghana Irrigation Development Authority. He claims there are enough irrigation systems in the growing areas to support the farming. Do we have enough irrigation facility systems, I should say, in the country to help with all year round production? In Ashanti, we have about three big irrigation systems, one in Akumada, Isusu, and then one in Kolongo. In Bonga Hafu, we have no less than 22 schemes, which are uh, schemes uh, uh, that can produce uh, no vegetables for the country. Also, all across the country, we have very, very uh, numerous numbers of schemes. If you go to KIS in Pong, very huge, over 2,000 hectares. You go to the north, Via Tono, very huge lands under irrigation, developed by the government of Ghana to produce food to feed its own land. So why do Burkina Faso produce tomato and rush there to buy at the peril of our own farmers? 